<laughs> Hi, welcome to another episode of You Had Me Eat, the number one voted gluten-free podcast uh, in the entire known universe ever published, oh, ever made. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm Jules, and this is uh, your lovely Erica here. I don't know. Introducing honestly, our who wonderful am I podcast. at this point. <laughs> uh, so, Jules, it's January. It's 2024, man. I thought this you were talking wild. about the temperature when you said that. It here where I am, it it's barely gotten into the twenties today, and it's, it's snowing here. like a mad it's dog. Lovely, it's lovely. Um, yeah, that, everyone else is complaining about not going outside and like having to walk their dogs. And like, oh, I got hot yesterday. I took off my sweatshirt and was just like walking around. The sun is beautiful. Yeah, no, that's not happening here. We have, um, I think, at last check, we have eight or nine inches outside. It's too much. <laughs> how much is it's enough? too much snow i don't know <laughs> i don't know man i don't i mean the last time i was in that snow was probably in 2019 when i went yeah. to minneapolis and they had a snowstorm and i'm like this is horrible why do people live here because you need to be reminded of winter i know i know it is beautiful it looked beautiful outside oh it's gorgeous <laughs> but here it's like no it's not yeah. no it's really beautiful here it's um I'm loving it. Um, of course, I didn't go out and shovel, but um, it's very pretty to go crunching in it, you know, in your snow boots. Kind of fun. Your parka. Yeah, fun. I guess I kind of understand seasonal depression at this point because I'm battling the whole near New Year, New You kind of phenomenon mm-hmm. that's happening online. And mm. I can't imagine doing that and also being like, oh, outside is an impenetrable sea of whiteness. Like, this seems like a lot to put on your conscious at that yeah, point. Yeah, except that, you know, this impenetrable sea of whiteness is bright. Mm. So it's kind of at least, you know, if it was raining, because right mm. now, if it was a few degrees warmer, this would be rain and that would be depressing. So this to me is fluffy and pretty and white Mm. and bright and you get to look at the birds who have like snow on their beaks and they just you know it's just so cute and it's happy kind of adorable it is very adorable and it's happy so um i i I don't know i I don't tend to get depressed in this weather but um when it's a typical maryland winter which is like 34 and raining yeah that's disgusting and i i'm all kinds of depressed because i'm like where's the effing rain like it's right here and i want snow and it's too cold to do anything because it's 34 so it just should might as well be snow you know but this this is winter this this is where it's at so Mm. i'm i'm all about it you're so cute in your little sweater my sweater i'm all bundled up i had to so adorable (laughs) i know so (laughs) this weekend i'm headed to vegas and I was like, yes, awesome. Got my whole freaking suitcase packed and like, this is going to be great. And then I looked at the weather because Vegas and Phoenix are roughly the same for weather. So I was like not playing anything wild. Dude, it's raining the entire time that I'm there. Yeah. Sorry. Speaking and it's rain. cold, cold for but You're going to be inside. I mean, you're never outside but like, in Vegas, right? Yeah, because I walk the strip from like one place to another, mm. so it's gotta because everything those... in Vegas is walkable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got it. You got to hit those uh, slots all yeah. up and down the strip. Got right? to. Well, like Monami Gabby is like walking distance from where. Like we don't take Ubers unless you're going far off the strip. So like it's just going to be depressing and cold, which means they won't have the Bellagio fountain on if it's raining, and then it's like. Is it even Vegas if you don't take a fountain <laughs> pick? Oh, I don't know. You can still go in front of the Eiffel Tower and get your rain picture, right? It's raining in Paris. Exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know. The whole thing kind of put me in a bad mood because I'm like, I wanted it to be like this cute weather that's outside right now. It's not. It's going to be raining the whole time. Sucks. And that means that everything I get in my sample bag is going to be wet. <laughs> well, um, I'm sure that Vegas needs the rain, so I'm not going to begrudge them that. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, yeah. speaking of Vegas, yes. I'll be going there for the my annual trek to Vegas, uh, my 30-minute plane ride, um, for the Fancy Food Show, which is a specialty diet food show. And this is not a gluten-free show. So every year, it's like so hit or miss mm-hmm. on if there's actual things that we can eat there and new products. Um, yeah. I've been getting quite a few pitches and some of them are like just wildly off brand as yeah. they always are, but 
I love registering for press and saying, you know, these are the things I'm interested in and, you know, gluten-free, you know, whatever. And then you get all these things like we're a whole, whole wheat company and Mm -hmm. we do everything with barley and wheat and whatever. I'm like, why, why are you reaching out to me? I just want to understand. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know what I'll really be seeing there. Um, the two people that I know that pitch me that I'm like really interested in are Wodo, which I've already had all their products, including mm-hmm. their new ready to eat cookies um, that are like refrigerated and you just pop them in your, um, pop them in the toaster oven or whatever. And then little GF chefs who, who I know. And then, uh, Oh, uh, Republic of tea reached out to me and they have some new tea, which I'm like, how exciting. And yes, it is certified gluten-free tea, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's not, this revolutionary stuff what we really see at Expo West because mm-hmm. obviously it's it's not made for that. This is a right. specialty show. Right. Um, but yeah, what'd you say like 90% of what we see at the fancy food shows like salami? 90% oh. salami oh. show. Cured meat mm-hmm. and yeah. cheese. Yeah. Although fancy food, in all fairness, fancy food is where I discovered Miyoko's. Um, it is, it's, yeah, it's cheese and meat. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's charcuterie board in a show. Yes. And also like um, some stuff that you would find at sweets and snacks like these the high end candies would be there. Mm. Um, I know Jelly Belly is a big one every year. And so, oh, they um, they did launch new bamboozled flavors. Oh, I did not check to see like what gross flavors they are because I want to be surprised. Um, Mm -hmm. But can't wait for that. That'd be fun. Booger Mm -hmm. barf. Mm-hmm. can't wait well so and back to your tea comment i think that's interesting because a lot of people are like tea's like duh tea's gluten-free okay back it up because duh tea is not necessarily gluten-free yeah. because there is a lot of barley in tea and you have to be careful that you know your teas that you're picking out are actually gluten-free and so finding yeah. a certified gluten-free tea is actually kind of a, a a win um to find a brand like republic of tea that is willing to go that extra mile and certify that their teas are gluten-free yes love you republic of tea that for plus they that. launched this whole bakery line which is really interesting it was like decadent red velvet tea and i'm like there is no way that this is gluten-free of course it is because it's certified gluten-free their team is so amazing their brand is so amazing that's why i've always supported them I am an addict. I have at least eight to <laughs> 12 canisters on me at a time. Yeah. Um, and they do just the cutest stuff. Like I remember years ago in Bridgerton or, or the crown first launched or something. I know I did a party for them. It was just like, they're just such good people. And the fact that they are certified gluten-free makes it even better because I know that I can have anything there. And it is great. So they launched this chai tea concentrate that actually came out in Sprouts already. Ooh, um, I need to look for that. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. I haven't tried it yet. Um, and a couple of new things that I'm like, ooh, this definitely piques my interest. But um, other than that, it's charcuterie and tea. So nice. we'll see. Stay tuned to my Instagram um, if you want to see stuff live, but we'll be discussing it the next episode on what I find at fancy food that's happening this weekend. Cool. I look forward to it because yeah. I will not be in Vegas with you, which is unfortunate because we would have such a good time in Vegas. You'd be like, wow, this girl is intense. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm going to spend $5 in nickels and then I'm going to hold it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be me in Vegas Yeah, in terms of my gambling, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll um, see. But I do have a reservation at Mona Miga B, which they're very good about being gluten free because it's a lettuce entertain you restaurant out of Chicago. That whole chain of restaurants is incredible. Um, and uh, I do have a reservation at Yellowtail, which is an, another amazing mm, um, yeah. sushi place. And I also have front row tickets to Magic Mike, which <gasps> no. is amazing. Oh. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> I'm sitting in the same seat as I did last time because mm-hmm. when I was front row there, I sat right by the stairs. So every time the guys come up the stairs, they'll like put a hand on you to go up the stairs. And I'll... <laughs> <laughs> he touched my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, totally amazing. So... <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yep. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> All right, cool. So we'll see. I'm going to be looking for that on your Instagram. <laughs> I did want to share a research study. Do you have a second for a research study? I am all about the research study, so lay it on me. So 
Massachusetts General Hospital, MassGen, Brigham, Mm -hmm. whatever, um, has Dr. Fasano, as you know, heart. Yes, big hearts. They launched a press release January 5th, so not that long ago, and it talked about identifying a bacterial strain um, in children that demonstrate a, a potentially protective role for celiac disease. And if you're if you're kind of hip to the the celiac disease research, this comes from the C D Gem study, which is like the sexiest study for the genomic, environmental microbiome, and metabolomic study. Um, so all those factors, right? The genes, the environment that you're in, your own microbiome, like what is in your individual stomach and small intestine. And then they're studying about 600 kids here in the US and Italy and Spain, and then trying to get an understanding of like, what is happening to kids that either helps them not get celiac disease or um, allows them to, to have that celiac disease gene triggered. So the CD gem study has been going on for a while. It's a 10 year longitudinal study. So the thing about longitudinal studies is they're not really sexy when they start because it's gonna you're gonna wait about ten years to get the research yeah. that you need. Um, it's like waiting forever to have a cake come out of the oven. You're like, this <laughs> smells really good, but I don't know what the final thing is. So yeah. they're they're looking at the microbiomes of these kids, and um, I mean, what they have to do for this study. They're sending in poop and urine and I think saliva and a couple of other things um, for these kids over and over again. And they found out a ton of stuff already about the um, microbiome and epigenetics and genetic profiles of these kids that may or may not lead them to develop celiac disease. But this research study that they just put out um, talked about that there are five microbial strains that appear to play a protective role against the development of celiac disease. So these are with kids that are um, predisposed to having celiac disease, yeah. not just like normal people, because right. normal people are just like, okay, well, yeah. just a small percentage. It's, it's hereditary anyway. in their family. That yep. Kind of <laughs> so they're predisposed, and then they're eating, gluten. you know, things gluten that mm-hmm. may cause uh, obviously celiac disease to trigger. So it's really interesting that there are five of these things that may be protective. And you're like, cool, what does that mean? And I'm like, I don't know, but that's very exciting. <laughs> but just well, knowing it, that there yeah. are there are guts and if bu- they've identified bu- bugs, that. bugs and guts and things within yeah. you. And, and this is where the start of like, is there a micro, is there a probiotic that kids can take to help them from developing celiac disease? Is there a bacterial strain that we know is important, critically important for kids to have that will help them not potentially have an autoimmune disease triggered? What's pr- what that? What can we do to protect these kids and their um, microbiome to help further prevent celiac disease or even future autoimmune disease from occurring? So. Well, fecal transplants, I mean, if they've identified a a host that has this, one of these or all five of these bacteria um, that is protective, is it at some point worth exploring a fecal transplant to prevent someone else, you know, to exchange that to prevent someone Mm -hmm. else from then contracting it? That's a very interesting extension of this study. It is. It is. And I I love um, talking about fecal transplants. I love talking about fecal transplants. (laughs) Um, I did. Should have been a comma in there somewhere. Speaking about it. (laughs) Um, I watched this amazing documentary um, and it's called Designer Shit. And it is so good. And it talks about a woman with ulcerative colitis who decides to do a DIY fecal transplant from her partner, mm, but like in a, in a completely like, like appropriate way, mm-hmm. like she consulted <clears throat> experts. Um, she consulted these people who are doing these studies, but it has not been found to be helpful in people with IBS. Sadly, it has mm-hmm. not been helpful in people with IBD. Uh, it has only been really proven and useful in C. diff, but experts are still exploring this. So she's like, listen, mm-hmm. if it works for C. diff, why can I not sure. try it for ulcerative sure. colitis? Mm-hmm. So there's this whole realm of like research that's being done about microbiota therapy. Like what is what is going on in your digestive tract besides your genes 
and besides your environment, right. what's going on in your microbiome that is triggering these autoimmune diseases or giving you flares of autoimmune diseases. So it's really interesting to see the CD gem study come up with these things that it's like, okay, so we are seeing bacteria, bugs and guts uh, that can help kids not necessarily be triggered yeah. for celiac disease. That's really cool. And research is weird because it's like, that's great. When are we going to put it to theory? Like when yeah. babies have, you know, I'm like, oh, great. Well, 10 more years. Put, yeah. put it back in the oven. <laughs> bring it back out again. Um, yeah. That's just kind of bummer about a research is it's so great. But then it's like, then it goes into practice and then it goes into clinical trials. And then it's like 10 years from now, we'll be very excited about this study that happened today. Right. Um, but knowing that the research is happening and knowing that they're finding things that could potentially yeah. be preventative are just so good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for sharing that, um, bringing that to everyone's attention. I think yeah. that's really, really helpful. And then, you know, as people think about, I mean, I know a lot of people are done with their year end gifts, but some people do a monthly giving. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're into that or if you're looking for some place to put your money, like, Mass General, like Dr. Fasano's program, like, you know, this stuff is going on in the background. Um, Forever. You know, it, might I not, mean, it might not be as sexy as some other stuff, or, you know, you might not hear about it as often or whatever, but this is the forefront of the research that's out there in terms of, you know, what's going to push forward all of our research and understanding of celiac disease, prevention of celiac disease, cures potentially down the future, um, you know, understanding of the microbiome. This is all what's going on. And so if you have dollars that you're looking to um, give for um, you know, the furthering research and education, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a really good place to do it. I would also say at the SSCD, the study, for, the Society for the Study of Celiac Disease, yeah. along with their partners, CDF and Beyond Celiac, they give grants to researchers to study this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, SSCD takes donations, SS, uh, Beyond Celiac and CDF takes donations, and they give partner grants. They give $50,000 or $100,000 each year um, for grants for the study. And it's really interesting at the last SSCD meeting, the S Society for the Study of Celiac Disease, I can never <laughs> say that. <laughs> <laughs> They actually ran through all the people that had been yeah. given the money and then they talked about what their research was. And I'm just yeah. like, whoa, this is a wild and it's yeah. going to be really hard for me to tell people what this actually means. But mm -hmm. it's very exciting. Yeah. Most research is like place. that. I knew it went to go to good places. And it's yeah. like 100% mm -hmm. I will give them my money because they are doing amazing things with it. And like that is the only way that we're going to move forward right. with this disease is, right. is having the research dollars to fund stuff like this. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you for sharing from your research corner, Erica. Well, before we get into food, um, and this actually relates back a little bit to the tea <sighs> conversation, because, you know, a lot of people think that they don't have to worry about, you know, gluten being in their tea. Well, um, I think a lot of people this just is realize the worst. that <laughs> they had to worry about gluten being in their dry spices. And a lot of people did, did know that to a certain extent, but like there, there is, Oftentimes flour is used as a, you know, something to keep an anti-caking agent in, in things like dry spices. And so a lot of times you'll see, you know, listings of spice companies, like why is this not listed as gluten-free? And people are like, it's just a spice. Well, it's not necessarily just a spice. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. folks, you really do need to look for gluten-free spices, especially spice mixes, because there could be something else in there that's not just a spice. Um, and so along those same lines, there was this company, um, what is it called? Benny Vest, Tees. Vesta? Vest, Vesta is, the, is the, the brand name, but the company is Benny T. And so there was this FDA recall that came out this month. And it's this dry <laughs> spice mix. It's called dry hot sauce. And these this company has been putting not just flour in their spices, but breadcrumbs, but that the ingredient listing said enriched flour and it was actually breadcrumbs. Anywho, they've been doing this for apparently 15 years and they have been just saying like in the ingredient listing, you know, enriched flour. Well, part of what the, um, 
Food Allergen Labeling Consumer Protection Act has been saying for many, many, many years, um, like, I don't even know how many years this has been in effect. I mean, like 25, 30, I don't know, like a long time. Um, there's something called the top number of food allergens. And that number has changed over the years. It used to be like eight food allergens. Now, as of the addition of sesame, it's nine. If one of those food allergens is listed and is, is part of your ingredient. So in this case, wheat being part, a component of flour or breadcrumbs, it has to be separately called out on a food label. This is understood across the board in manufacturing of food because it is part of FALCBA, Food Allergen Labeling Consumer Protection Act. If you're going to, if you're going to manufacture food, you have to understand food labeling because you're labeling your food. It's part of the, your job as a food yeah. manufacturer because it's the law. And so if you have a food label, you have to have a nutritional label on it and you have to have a label listing what the ingredients are. And those ingredients can't just say stuff. It has to say, and if you're going to sell in retail, <laughs> sell yeah. in retail, or if you're going yeah. to just like, cause like it, things on a farmer's market, you don't have to have this, correct? Yeah. But you um, should. <laughs> yeah. You have, I mean, if you're selling it as a food, mm -hmm. it's regulated by the FDA. If it's a packaged good, Mm -hmm. then it's regulated. So it has to be listed this way. Um, and so these folks have to abide by the FDA regulations. And, um, and, and it sounds like I'm going into the weeds like about this particular brand, but hear me out because it's bad enough that this brand didn't do it, but this is an example of many, many brands that do it wrong. Um, and it gets, it gets worse, but, um, they, they have to not only say enriched flour, which is true, that that was actually a, a component part, but they have to tell you what that enriched flour is made of. Mm -hmm. In this case, a food allergen being wheat. And so wheat has to then be called out on the label, either bold in, in parentheses afterwards or separately later on in a contained statement, contains wheat because it's one of those top nine food allergens. Now, for those of us who are gluten-free, this is not enough because it could also contain barley or rye, which contain gluten. So we are not covered by FALCBA in that way. We're not completely covered, which is part mm -hmm. of the whole reason why food labeling is such a problem for people with gluten, mm -hmm. right? Because we are not completely safe with a food allergy label that contains wheat situation, does not totally cover us. But in this situation, at least it would have said, you know, okay, wheat is in here. Um, yes, we should know that flour often means wheat, but it doesn't necessarily mean wheat, you know, what mm -hmm. have you. It doesn't take the onus off of them to do it right. But the point is, they were doing this wrong, apparently, for 15 years. They have been not listing this, according to their own ad admission in their statement. But then they said, this is the worst part. This is the this, part. For me, me, this, this is, is the worst the part. part. This is the worst part. Because, yes. I suppose you could operate in your own silo of ignorance. It's not excusable. Um, but the way they handled it was what was so wrong. This is what Eric and I are getting to. They put out a statement that said, hey, our inspectors didn't tell us that we were doing this wrong. And so, you know, it's not our fault. And then they said, um, you know, basically this was just a typo is essentially what they said. And that this is a completely safe product to ingest if you don't have a wheat allergy. Further showing that A, it's no big deal to them. Like this, this literally they said, this is basically just as a typo. It's an oversight. No one told us we shouldn't have been doing this. Yeah, no and one B, said that we had to include wheat in the right, label. Right. And which is, no one had to tell you. This was your responsibility to do this your yourself. You manufacturer, yeah. you right. idiot. Um, yeah. Um, and then the other part was that they still don't get it. It's completely safe for anybody unless they have a wheat allergy. That is 100% like their, their entire caveat is as long as you don't have a wheat allergy, you can eat this. Again, completely wrong. What about the millions of people who have celiac disease or the millions of people who have gluten intolerance or the millions of people who are, have other autoimmune diseases yeah. or other medical conditions 
because that mean that they cannot have gluten. That, I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of people with a wheat allergy. There are millions of people who have other conditions who cannot have gluten and wheat. And, and they don't, still don't even understand this. And, and they're, they're basically just glossing over it, saying this is no big deal. And um, I, I, I was really appalled by the statement that they put out because they were not apologetic at all about what they did. They said it was someone else's fault. Yeah. And we they, didn't know. They, and we then they know. went on and still made gross errors, saying it's a safe product the way it's labeled for for the entire population, except for this very small, tiny little segment of the population of people who have wheat allergies, what they said. And again, this is an example of one company. I'm sure most people listening to this have never heard of the company and they're not in danger by this company, whatever. The point is, this is an example of what happens all the time mm -hmm. because we see examples of this. Our readers bring it up to us all the time too. Um, it's called facial misbranding. If you want to know the technical term, but it's when manufacturers put products out on the market, <laughs> manufacturers put products on the market. They don't understand their obligations. No. They make a mistake on the label and it goes to market anyway. And that is why when you hear us beat this drum that you have to read every single label every single time, it's not just us, you know, trying to scare people. And in fact, reading the labels every single time still doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to find every problem in every now, situation. See, I think this is what scares me the most out of this. One, they're just the whole apology. That's not really the apology. It was just like so perfect because they're just like, I didn't know I was supposed to. Yeah. It's yeah. like, how long have you been manufacturing food? Jesus <laughs> Christ. But it's more of a worry that like someone you know would make something for yeah. you or um, a food service or restaurant uses these spices like Jesus yeah. because well that's what like people said in response to my post people were like well people what are you saying people don't have an obligation to read the label that's ridiculous like these people you know you should read your own label I said absolutely you should read your own label but that doesn't mean that these people shouldn't have that this manufacturer shouldn't have uh, uh, like listened to the law and done the right thing. That is their yeah. first and foremost, their, their duty, because yes, we as consumers who have food allergies and celiac disease live by this rule mm -hmm. and read every label, but exactly what you just said. And this is what I said in my comments. What if a well-meaning friend or neighbor or a chef, a very busy chef who is taking a label at its face you know, what if any of these people trying to do the right thing for someone else who doesn't live and die by, you know, reading every label because their health depends on it, yeah. uses this product or any other product that is mislabeled on and, behalf and of you? And that's what I'm getting at is these, these, ing I don't want to say ingredients, but these like sub ingredients on a recipe that you would think yeah. would be naturally whatever right the inclusion of spices or salts or flavorings it's like the whole rest of the recipe could be safe but if someone's right. a dummy and just picked it up and didn't see wheat or didn't really fully flesh right. out like what is enriched flour i mean most people would know but if they're just like yeah this works and then you're like dude for real like come on like right. the fact that it's well, breadcrumbs, like, come on. Right. Well, okay, let's let's just take it, take what you just said and follow it through to its natural conclusion. Let's say that the enriched flour was gluten-free flour, okay? Yeah. So they didn't have to say contains wheat. Mm -hmm. And so, the and, and they, by the way, no yeah. one's under any obligation to say their product is gluten-free. Mm -hmm. You do not have to say yeah. gluten-free anywhere on a product. So let's say that this product said enriched flour on it, mm -hmm. didn't say wheat. Yep. That flour could have been gluten-free flour mm -hmm. and it would have been correctly labeled. Like, so, you know, someone could have be. assumed that they because were doing the right thing out. because mm -hmm. the label w should have been accurate. Yeah. Some people so, just gloss over not anything and then they're like, oh, well, they would say wheat if it had wheat in it. Exactly. I've had people be like, well, I didn't see anything. It's like, bro. That's why, like, not having barley called out is so frustrating because it's yes. so easy to miss. And barley like, is a lot chip? of things. Yeah. yeah, rye not so much, but barley. Barley is a cheap flavoring, and <sighs> it's in everything from rice great. krispies to tea. Mm. So, 
it's yeah that one is is a, in a lot of places and it's not it does not have to be called out like it's you know this barley is usually named malt and would yeah. your friend or neighbor know that malt means gluten in most yeah. situations no probably not so th this is just an example of the fact that you cannot necessarily trust a company's labeling because they don't all get it right, which is why we love companies that are certified gluten-free mm -hmm. because they've gone to the extra trouble of having somebody look over everything from the and outside an yes. and audit it and test it and retest it and, you know, look over all the component ingredients and make sure everybody's doing everything right. And if God forbid there was ever a problem, the company who certifies them will issue a recall mm -hmm. way faster than the FDA will way faster. Yes. I mean, so FDA has got a lot on their plate right they now. Do. They do. Poor guys. They always do. You can see my post on Instagram at GF jewels uh, and on, on my Facebook page as well. If you want we'll to see it. a letter from um yeah we'll link it we'll drop the link um it's it's not so much about this particular company as about the fact that this is an example of the fact that this still happens i didn't know i didn't know <laughs> no one told me no <laughs> like, what else did they not tell you you have to clean your equipment yeah. like i'm just a little baby nobody <laughs> you have to wear manufacturer's spices at the wash my hair no <laughs> <laughs> no. like oh god please I don't know. I just gross people. Okay, so it's January, but we're gonna skip to February and talk about Valentine's Day because because because, because I want to get out because, of this whole because it was dry really depressing January, what we just New talked Year, about. Near, New You, whatever. I want to start talking about chocolate. <laughs> I need chocolate in my life. And cake and chocolate. Um, and <laughs> That's candy. right. That's right. So I mentioned this because I now want to get this out early. Mm -hmm. Target always has their Valentine's Day stuff super early. They've already sold out of all their Valentine's Day Stanley Cups. We've all seen the stuff online. Oh, God. Um, Can I Valentine's just tell you Day. that the store had Easter stuff out when I was out yesterday? Yeah, of course. Easter stuff. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I went into Michael's. Back to you. It's all Easter. All the Valentine's like, Day stuff is 40% off. Stuff? <laughs> and I'm like, do we just... <laughs> Did I miss something? Was I in a hole? Did it snow that much that I just missed Valentine's Day? They're like, Valentine's Day is on clearance. And I'm like, Valentine's Day hasn't happened yet. I haven't put up my decorations yet. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'll take all of this at 40% off. I like, know, right? Mm, okay. But yeah, it's all Easter. Anyway, we're not talking about Easter yet. Don't even get okay. started on that. But yeah. Target has a Valentine's Day stuff at And Target is great because, especially if you have children, if they do Valentine's, which is cool. That's awesome. But like, if you ever have those like Valentine's day candies, the stuff that they put out, or if you attach candies to your Valentine's card, whatever, they have the most adorable stuff out and you have to get them now because they sell out so quickly, just yeah. like Halloween. Yeah. It's roughly the same things for Halloween. Yeah. Like they've got the Siete Foods churros in the individual bags and they're all individual bags. But some of these are special items that you can't get anywhere else. And so I went out and like cleared out my Target already, which is great. So you're the reason why Target sells out so fast. I'm the reason <laughs> the Target sells out. So these are, I'm holding up Yum Earth gummies. So they're shaped always like, um, like hearts and cute things. This is a new product. This is not the regular gummies. This is organic sugar coated gummies and they are really good <laughs> and sugar on top of sugar sugar on top of sugar i swear to god they're so freaking good and it has the to and from here so you can write Aww. your little valentine on this packet it's so cute it's so, so i cute. bought a packet of these but my favorite thing and they only do it for valentine's day is um the company lesser evil and lesser evil does popcorn but yeah. they do seasonal popcorn and their seasonal popcorn is above and beyond their best flavors that they have all year. So in summer, they always have a watermelon, which is kind of weird. Whoa, and they, I haven't seen that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they have a pina colada and I got Ooh. them early and they're in my cabinet. And so that's summer flavors. And you can, you can usually get these weird seasonal flavors only on like Thrive Market because the second that they hit Whole Foods, they're like done. They're out, mm -hmm. everyone grabs them. This is people like me. 
<laughs> but their winter flavors are matcha white chocolate Ooh. and uh, is that pumpkin vegan? spice, and they're all vegan. And that <sighs> matcha, Love that. that matcha changed my life. I bought <laughs> so many on Thrive Market, like just the big giant Thrive Market boxes, and they're just full of matcha popcorn from Lesser Evil. And that is probably my second favorite flavor because my first favorite flavor is a Valentine's Day exclusive. <laughs> and every year I tell Lesser Evil, they're my favorite and you need to make them in large packets and you have to sell them all year long. And just to like, you. <laughs> it's a seasonal flavor lady. <laughs> but I've done this for like four years. I'm like, it's my favorite. So I am showing a ginormous snack oh pack my gosh. of 18 bags and they're 18 snack bags. But if you can read, it's white chocolate strawberry flavor. Oh my and it's gosh. Organic popcorn labeled so gluten free. Uh, they are uh, made with strawberry powder uh, and beet juice concentrate. And oh my gosh. Uh, they're made in a facility that has milk and egg. But again, these are vegan and certified gluten free. And again, they are tiny bags that you can write to and from on. So if you want to use them as Valentine's Day for a kid's Valentine's, they're so freaking cute, but this strawberry white chocolate flavor is my favorite. That's so amazing. I bought. Can you can you only get them at so Thrive and on um, and at Target? Um, so Target, Whole Foods, Thrive, and I do not know where else. But those are the only places that I found them, like in my in Arizona. Wow. Um, but yeah. So last year, I went to pick them up at my one Target, and it was sold out. So I went to all the targets in <laughs> my area, which there were like 10, um, cause I like drove out there and picked up as much as I could cause they're so freaking good. And wow. then this year I'm like, wait, I could just order them on Thrive Market and have them delivered to my door. Okay. So save on gas. <laughs> yep. Well, and also like the whole, like, Oh, what am I going to find at this target? Mm, um, yeah. I went to target man. for popcorn and came home $200 later. Oh, ac absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are the two that I like definitely get along with the individual bags of churro strips from Siete and they have a whole line of the yum earth uh, food allergy friendly gummies mm -hmm. and um, lollipops that you can also do two from on um, so they have a ton of stuff and that is why we're talking about it now because if you want good valentines you gotta yeah. plan now we will drop a link to my candy article in here that tells you like which ones are gluten-free which ones are not and um yeah you know, Eric will probably drop a link to some dedicated shopping list of her own. <laughs> go to your target and wipe them out like I do. There you go. There you go. I love it. Well, for me, I love all these candy ideas, but um, of course I'll be doing baking and everything chocolate. But um, I, um, I, I have been excited to, as I said, get out of the, um, the, the January like uh, month of like, you're supposed to be depriving yourself. I never do that though, but um, I feel like everyone else does. And so I'm, I know, I've been doing a lot of bread baking in January, which is great. I love the comfort food, like all the bread, you know, just, I love that, but I'm excited to get back to some more sweet treats. Yeah. I have, I have probably like, I don't know. I can't, I, I think I lost count of the number of chocolate cake recipes I have on my site. And I just made, I just made triple chocolate cookies which are chocolate, cho they're like a chocolate, a Toll House chocolate chip cookie, but I made them with um, all vegan chocolate chips, vegan white chocolate, which they now have um, from mm -hmm. Enjoy Life Foods has vegan white mm -hmm. chocolate chips as well and as Pasha. Pasha. Yep. And, um, and I used Pasha um, dark chocolate candy bar and I chopped it into big, huge chunks. And mm -hmm. then I used um, the regular vegan semi-sweet chips as well. So I made like a Toll House cookie, like with all of those in it. Can it was I tell so you good? What I just did that, but I did a rice milk certified gluten free rice milk uh -huh. chocolate from Enjoy yes. Life, a certified gluten free oat milk chocolate from Endangered Species. Ooh, I got yum. it only because I asked, and I was very nice, and I have no idea how to buy it, but they're so freaking good. And again, Bad. certified gluten free, and the Trupo Treat Gems. Oh gosh, yeah. So it's like the mini, treats. yeah, the mm -hmm. mini M and M's. They were so freaking good. I bet. So three kinds of chocolate, and they yes. were like a little under baked, so they were all gooey. And I'm like, yes. you got to be kidding yes. me. These are the best cookies ever. Yes. yes. So 
Yes. Three chocolates. I actually literally am, I'm putting this up today, which is of course, you know, when this posts, um, it's going to have been up before, but I was literally, I just did a little quick, um, video today showing people that you always take your cookies out when, before they look like they're done, because you want them to be a little, unless you want them to be Toll House or the, whatever, the Chips Ahoy, like the hard ones. Mm -hmm. um, if you want them to be still be chewy, take them out before you think that they're done because they will continue cooking on the baking sheet. Mm -hmm. And then they, they like are puffy and then they sort of sink a little bit and then, oh, they're so, 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 so good. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. That's the way you want them to be. But I have a recipe on my site and this is what I love doing for Valentine's Day. This is, this is where I was going with this because I've been making the little cookies, which is great. Um, and I was dipping them in my coffee this morning. It was so good. But um, you know where it's at, girl. I know. But um, I have a recipe where you take the same dough and you just take a pizza play, like tray, like a, a round one, and you make it into a big heart. So good. Cookie. Mm -hmm. But you follow the recipe on my site to, for how to do it, how thick to make it, because it's going to spread out some. And you don't have to do anything to it. It's just a heart. Um, or you can frost the heart, or you can write, you know, to, from, or whatever you want to in the heart. It is the cutest valentine's mm -hmm. treat and it's so easy to make i mean everyone knows how to make chocolate chip cookie dough um and then you know i will drop the link to the recipe that we're talking about that's just so delicious but um if you need a delicious chocolate vegan and gluten-free chocolate chip cookie recipe or it doesn't have to be vegan but uh, it's gluten-free um and then you can put all these delicious yummy things in it like what we've been talking about or only one or nothing it doesn't really matter whatever you want to do but make it in that heart shape it is so good it's so cute and it's so easy so it doesn't have to be like this big grand triple chocolate chocolate you know cake thing that you know maybe you're no, afraid God, to no. make no, it doesn't have to be like that, that. <laughs> but who wouldn't just love you know giving someone or receiving a heart shaped chocolate chip cookie it's really really cute and along the same lines um, we usually make a heart shaped pizza as well. So I use mm -hmm. my gluten free pizza crust mix and just make the pizzas in heart shapes. And that's also really, really cute to do for Valentine's Day. You can pretty much do anything in a heart shape. I, I make my, um, my pie crust and I'll make, I'll take large heart shaped, um, oh, cookie cutters, yeah, cookie cutters. And hand I pies. hand make hand pies with that so when cute. I fill them with cherry pie filling. I, I'm telling you, when you do that and you bake them and then I, I finish them off in the air fryer after they're baked, they taste like, I'm going to say this out of love, they taste like the McDonald's hand pies of old, <laughs> like the ones that I remember, <laughs> like going through the drive through and burning my tongue on that yeah. I just thought were like the mm -hmm. best things in the whole wide world. That's what they taste like. And, and it's the perfect proportion of pie dough to pie filling. And they're just... Mm, I just I love them so much. Um, so it really you can do anything in a heart shape. And of course, there's the classic sugar cookies. You cannot miss making sugar mm -hmm. cookies for Valentine's Day. And you can frost them or not frost them. Uh, I was just teaching my son the other day. The easiest cookie icing ever is simply take some um, confectioner's sugar and add as much milk or apple cider or whatever liquid you want. Orange juice. You could be really anything you want to um, to flavor it just add little drops of it until it gets to the consistency that you can drizzle it on or dip the cookie flat mm -hmm. down into it. Could not be easier. You can put um, frosting, uh, co food coloring into it, or just leave it white. Doesn't matter. None of these take skills, people. Like they're so yeah. easy to make, especially like with the sugar cookies. I have a sugar cookie mix, which is super, super, super easy. So you don't even need it's to buy anything sugar funky. Mix. It really is. So we hear good. from people all the time that it's better than regular cookies. So if you feel like, and I've never made this before. I've never made that gluten-free or I'm not a really good baker or whatever. Don't miss out on these fun traditions, um, these fun things that you can do to share your love with people through food um, because it really is a magical thing to do to bake for someone and to share it, especially when it's, you know, super yummy like that. I think the other thing um, I would say about Valentine's Day, and of course I have tons of other chocolate and, and decorative so recipes. So many on the recipes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everything from like a five minute chocolate mug cake to chocolate beer cake. And like, there's just so many different things. But the other thing I would say is just for Valentine's day, find somebody you love spending time with. It does not have to be a romantic partner. It could be anybody you love spending time with and make food together. Whoa. That is a true yeah. like moment where you're just absolutely just 
being. Are you going to cry? I feel like you're going to oh. cry right now. <laughs> you're spending time like... together. <laughs> you're... Yeah, no. I mean, if you if you love spending time with somebody and you make food together, you are like you're you're baking, you're, you're making love. Like that is, I just think that's just a beautiful, <laughs> yeah, I am going to cry. You're crying. Like, no, it's, um, it, because I, I will is... not do that with anyone. I, it, I swear to God, if he comes in and I'm like, get away from Aww. everything. We, I don't, we don't cook well together. Because no, I've seen you him just cook. segregate. You say like, this is your station and this is what I want you to do. And and so it could be that he makes one dish and you make a different dish. Like if, if you don't work yeah. well together in terms of making the same dish. I, no, he does great. It's me because I'm like, I am so anal retentive about everything when it comes yeah. to my cooking, baking, me some floss, okay, whatever. So do and this. I'm like, <sighs> so do this. You make the homemade gluten-free wonton wrappers. You make the filling, you lay it all out. And then you say T- together tonight we are going to fill them and then mm-hmm. like finish mm-hmm. it or mm-hmm. or you make empanada dough and then you make the filling mm-hmm. and then you all fill them yeah. together or so ravioli or whatever with so we are a meat household make things a little tricky because i've seen him be like oh i dropped a raw piece turkey and i'm like did you just <laughs> put that in your mouth he's like oh, yeah and i'm like it was raw turkey are you kidding me which is why he doesn't cook for me because my stomach yeah. is not as strong as him. but I do remember we used to do that and we used to make sugar cookies together. And I go, okay, you have one cookie to decorate and we'll put it on Instagram. And he put it and I'm like, this is such a weird looking cookie, but okay. And I put it on Instagram and he's like, did you share that on Instagram? This is maybe like five, six years ago, like a long time ago. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, he goes, it's a dick. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And, um, it was a dick and balls and white what? frosting coming out of the dick. And I had not looked at it from that way because I was not assuming that my partner would, would put a dick on a cookie. And I'm like, and it was on Instagram and I'm like, this is so weird. And people were like, did you just post a, a dick on a dick, dick. <laughs> And I genuinely, and he's like, how did you not know that was a joke? And I'm like, I genuinely thought that's just how you wanted to decorate your cookie. And I didn't even see a dick on it. I'm so sorry. And he's just like, you've got to take that off of Instagram. I'm like, clearly, this is why we can't do this together. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. Um, oh my God. Okay. Well, um, I'm just clueless. Mm. And I'm like, that's a lovely cookie. Thanks so much. Mm. Snap a picture. And then I'm like, Rob, was a great idea. Well, um, I may or may not want to see whatever you guys come up with in the kitchen on Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might just be one of your little special somethings that you keep to yourself. Uh, yeah. I'm sure he'll be so excited that I told that story. If I know Matt, he will not care at all. I know. I'm pretty sure I saw the photo, <laughs> which I will not be sharing because I took that off of Instagram. But I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, I just think. You know, I don't want, you know how we, you are, you and I are both the same way. We don't want anyone to miss out on anything. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people feel like, you know, if they have dietary restrictions, they have to miss out on a lot of things. And maybe they feel like they can't go out to dinner because it's Valentine's day. Well, mm-hmm. I say, take this as an opportunity to save money yeah. on that stupid overpriced dinner and yes. make something super yes. fun, make a memory. And, um, you're not missing out on anything because you can make mm-hmm. anything at home deliciously and it doesn't have to be complicated or difficult or like overpriced because and if you have a kiddo that's gluten-free there's so many options to send your kids with gluten-free valentines jules has so many amazing cupcake recipes yeah. like have some free some and that way your kid can mm-hmm. have some when the rest of the whole school has you know uh, a valentine's day cupcake yeah. or whatever that some mom brought in like you yeah. can experience it. Everyone can have the same exact holiday. They can have Valentine's. They can share that same yep. kind of magic together that you get. and Or yep. the trauma when you don't get a Valentine <laughs> from that one kid in class that you that really like. special liked. someone. Yeah. That sucked. Did your, did your school ever do roses where, like, they could buy roses for someone, like, as a fundraiser? And then they would drop off the roses in your class and be like, this is from so-and-so. And And like every year I was like, 
oh my god, I hope I get a flower from that. And I never did. If we did, I have blocked it out of my memory. <laughs> Maybe I should too. <laughs> I don't recall. I don't recall that. Um, and so if we did, I definitely didn't get one. Yeah. Well, that sucks. And I hope that schools don't do that anymore because that was certainly more traumatizing. That was, rude. Yeah. That was really, way more really traumatizing. Mean and rude. I think the one girl in the corner with a dozen roses. Yes. And like everyone else oh, of is course. like, yeah. 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 Oh, straight yeah. up. Yeah. That would, that would really suck. Well, that sounds horrible. I hope the schools yeah. don't do that anymore. I'm going to yeah. ask my teacher friends if they're still doing traumatic <laughs> things like that. But um, yeah, happy Valentine's Day in advance. <laughs> well, yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of You Had Me Eat. We'll be back in two weeks with our bi-weekly podcast. Make sure that you stay tuned for next week because we will be talking about what happens when you accidentally eat the baby out of a king cake. Uh, then you need a fecal transplant. <laughs> <laughs>